So I want to talk about a video featuring Claire McCaskill that aired last week on MSNBC. Uh, I know that by now most of you have probably seen this and it's technically old news, but I couldn't not talk about this because this clip left me so thoroughly triggered that I can't stop thinking about it. So I've got to talk about it. So she was responding to something that Hillary Clinton said, and I'm not going to engage with what Hillary Clinton said. We're not going to entertain any of Hillary Clinton's ideas because Hillary Clinton needs to go away because she lost and she is a loser. But it seems like no matter how hard I try to ignore Hillary Clinton, she keeps trying to bait me into making a video about her. And I mean, she's teaching a masterclass on resilience. W what does that even mean? Why is she qualified to teach a masterclass on resilience? See, she, she's she's baiting me again. I, no, <laughs> Hillary Clinton is going to be put aside. Um, moving on to Claire McCaskill. She's responding to something that Hillary Clinton said. And uh, she's going to say uh, something that you expect from her. She's going to trot out the same bad advice after losing her election because she's a loser and she's going to tell progressives that they need to lower their standards and accept that some Democrats have to move to the center in order to win elections. Listen, all the other things are important and I know I'm going to get yelled at. If this isn't about abandoning progressive values. This is about being smart about winning elections. That's the essence of what Hillary Clinton was trying to say. And I know because, oh, she lost. What does she know? Oh, Claire lost. What does she know? Well, let me tell you, um, for, for people who run places that aren't bright blue, we actually know a lot. But she won some elections. I won elections in tough places. So have many of the moderates of the Democratic Party. And we can't just give them the back of our hand. We've got to talk about those things that those voters care about. I love how she's at least aware of the fact that nobody really takes her advice seriously since she's a loser who lost. But yet she still gives her advice as if she has any unique insight. And she says, uh, you know, this isn't necessarily about abandoning progressive values. This is about being smart and winning elections. Except let's look back at Claire McCaskill's 2018 campaign against Josh Hawley. Ask yourself this. Did this individual abandon their progressive values or are they merely positioning themselves to appeal to moderates in order to win? I would argue she didn't just abandon her progressive values. She went full fash in order to win over Trump voters. You voted for every one of President Obama's Supreme Court nominees, and then you voted against Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. So they say, you know, how is that not just moving with your party where it wants to go? I voted for over 70% of President Trump's judicial nominees, 70%. I voted for more than half of his cabinet members. I vote with him half the time. He signed 38 of my bills into law. That doesn't sound like to me, somebody who is knee-jerk. Some of my colleagues are knee-jerk against the president. I don't get up every day figuring out how to fight the president. I get up every day trying to figure out how I can fight for Missourians. To that point, you have this radio ad out now that says, at one point in an exchange, she's not one of these crazy Democrats. Claire's not afraid to stand up against her own party. Yep, and Claire's not one of those crazy Democrats. Who's the crazy Democrat? The crazy Democrats are people who walk in restaurants and scream in elected officials' faces. The crazy Democrats are, we have a state senator here in Missouri that actually advocated for the assassination of President Trump. That's a crazy Democrat. Um, I don't do those things. I am not somebody who thinks that we should ever be uncivil. I think what most Missourians want is for us to listen to each other, figure out where we can compromise, not scream in each other's faces, not call each other names. So I'm really talking about um, civility here. I'm talking about being polite, having good manners. Well, just to be clear, there's not another crazy Democrat in the Senate. Well, I would say this. I would not call my colleagues crazy, but Elizabeth Warren sure went after me when I advocated tooling back some of the regulations for small banks and, and credit unions. Um, I certainly disagree with Bernie Sanders on a bunch of stuff. Um, so I'm not afraid. You know, so you, you I, I've done those kinds of things, which do separate me, I think, from some of the knee jerk uh, folks that just are against the president no matter what. Do you regret supporting Hillary Clinton in 2016? Uh, you know, that's a hard question. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously my state disagreed with me on that. It's about immigration. Sure. So this caravan is getting a lot of attention. It's Stop coming. them at the border. 
And what do you do? When they get to the border, what do you do? I think the president has to use every tool he has at his disposal, and I'm 100 percent back him up on that, whether it is turning them back. Um, because we are not equipped to handle that many asylum claims into our system. Um, and by the way, that's one of the issues here. We've got to surge and use technology to address. When somebody comes across the border and they ask us for asylum, the law says we need to hear them. But we're waiting way too long to hear it. We need to hear them right away. So I do not want our borders overrun. And I support the president's efforts to make sure they're not. She went full on fash for nothing because she lost. She quite literally said, stop him at the border, went full on racist. And then she advocated for us to violate both domestic and international law and not allow those migrants to apply for asylum. And then she talked about how close she was to Donald Trump. You know, I voted for 70% of his judicial nominees. I voted for more than half of his cabinet members. I voted with him half of the time. And then she said we should never not be civilized. And she even refused to state whether or not she regretted supporting Hillary Clinton, an individual who she defended in the first clip that we watched. It's comical. This is the person who's giving advice to Democrats on how to win elections. She ran one of the worst campaigns I've ever seen a centrist Democrat run. On top of that, she bragged about getting called out by Elizabeth Warren for wanting to deregulate the big banks. Uh, what am I missing here? There's so much. Oh, um, she uh, criticized crazy Democrats for screaming in people's faces at restaurants. You mean screaming at Sarah Huckabee Sanders because Donald Trump's administration was quite literally taking children away from their families at the border? Is that... Is that the crazy people who you were talking about? Because I would argue that the people who weren't outraged at that were the ones who were crazy. Claire McCaskill is a fucking moron. And I'm not just saying that because I harshly want to vocalize the way that I disagree with her. I mean, quite literally, I think that she has a low IQ. She's dumb. But yes, yeah, she's probably getting paid millions of dollars per year to share bad advice with Democrats on national television when this buffoon lost in the most humiliating way imaginable. Imagine being a Democrat in her state and you hear the Democrat talking about how much they agree with Donald Trump. They vote with Donald Trump all the time. What's your instinct going to be? Well, fuck that. I'm, I'm not going to stand in line for hours and, you know, waste my time voting for you if you're just going to be like Donald Trump. Imagine how a Republican would act um, if they saw a Republican politician talking about how much they love Joe Biden and how much they vote with Joe Biden. They would never let that stand. But yet she thinks that it is really politically astute to just straight up go to the far right in order to win over voters. You're not winning over new voters. You're just losing old voters. The Democratic Party's base isn't going to come out if they see no discernible differences between you and the Republican. And she lost. Her strategy is a proven failure. And yet she still thinks that it's a good strategy. It's truly mind-numbingly infuriating. Now, as David Dole pointed out on Twitter, Hi, Claire McCaskill. Have you spoken with Representative Katie Porter, who flipped the longtime red district, first Democrat elected there, by being progressive? It's odd you never offer examples of moderates, a.k.a. corporate Dems, flipping red districts, yet you claim that's how Democrats win. Exactly. That is exactly it. She's hired by MSNBC because she is someone who they know will say what the Democratic Party establishment wants to hear. Don't worry about going, you know... Uh, too far to the right. Don't worry about remaining in the center and abandoning your base and making sure that nobody is inspired to vote for you. Just do what you need to do to win in that red state. What if we tried something different for once? What if we tried to actually register new voters, galvanize your base, and win that way? Rather than trying to win over people who are conservative and will vote conservative, why not try to make sure that your own base isn't irate with you half the time? I just, I don't know what to say. Democrats like this are the reason why this country is in the state that it's in, because we have a right-wing party that has gone insane. Most Republicans are quite literally against democracy in some GOP-controlled states. They're passing laws to give them the ability to appoint their own electors to the Electoral College to steal elections away from Democrats in future elections. They're doing voter suppression laws, rigging their way back to power with gerrymandering. And yet, Democrats, they just sit there and they do fuck all about it. If you actually fought, maybe we'd be in a better state currently. If you actually fought, 
maybe it's the case that the country wouldn't be devolving further and further into fascism. So, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's Claire McCaskill, so I think that everyone expected her to say this. Claire McCaskill is just a perpetual bad take machine where whenever she opens her mouth, there's at least a 75% chance that she's going to say something incredibly stupid and incorrect. So, um, yeah, I had to talk about this. I don't know why MSNBC pays her for this terrible advice. I mean, I mean what she's saying, it, I mean, they want her to say this, but it's nothing new. So why not hire somebody else to say it? This is somebody who delegitimizes the message that they're trying to propagate. I mean, she fucking lost on the MSNBC strategy. She lost by using the Clinton playbook. And she went wor like further than Clinton because she wouldn't even admit that she supported Hillary Clinton or, 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 or didn't regret supporting Hillary Clinton in 2018. Somebody who, according to her, maybe she was too far to the left. Hillary Clinton, really? I just, I don't know what to say. If the Democratic Party does not alienate people like this and drive them out of the party and people who think like this, they will continue to lose. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 